Hi, my name is Richard Capone. I'm the CEO of Let's Go Learn, and today I'm going to talk to you about Atom, which is our foundational math assessment. First of all, what's unique about Atom, it is not built on a standards model assessment. It does follow standards, but it is built on a diagnostic model. And what that means is normally a standards model is really trying to hit standards and summative scores. So it's providing you a score about how are students doing in numbers and operations, measurement geometries, these broad general areas. But what we do is we try to build everything on very specific skills. So we look at 44 subtests of foundational math and say, where is the student within each of these? So for instance, how are they in subtraction of whole numbers, multiplication of whole numbers, fractions, place value? And then it moves up and down and adapts and defines the student's zone of proximal development across all of these different subtests. And this provides a foundation for prescription, for IEPs, for small group instruction. And this is really fundamentally unique in the way Let's Go Learn handles assessments. Let me show you a classroom teacher's class and we'll take a look at it. So here we're inside of a class and we're looking at a bunch of sixth grade students' scores. Now initially we see a total score. Um, these are sixth graders, but you look, you know, in math, a lot of students are low. They have a, a mid fourth grade score mid-fifth grade, and we see the strand scores, numbers and operations, measurements, data, geometry, algebra. But again, these are summative scores. Where things get really interesting is when we go into the individual strands. So I'm going to click on numbers and operations. And now specifically, I can look across each of these different areas. So if I want to work with my sixth graders today on place value, I can click to sort the scores from high to low or low to high. So here's low to high. Click it one more time to go high to low. Now these are all grade level scores, so this green means these students have maxed out and have the maximum score. But let's say I want to create a small group for instruction. I click on the magnifying glass, and now we see my class. This is the scope and sequence of how you teach place value. You start off with two digit numbers, which is ones and tens. You move up, move up. Later on, we're working on ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. And then finally, we're teaching decimal place value. So these students right here are working on decimal place values. These two students are working on two digit, and these students down here have all mastered place value. So imagine this, I can create these small groups, I could assign homework assignments to them, I could really, really on a daily basis go into my classroom and start massaging my data and create actionable groups. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a detailed report for Thalia. I'm going to look at the progress report. So what's interesting about this is this report is very understandable because everything is in grade level scores as well as discrete skills. The double arrow tells us where she needs to work next and so it is actually her zone of proximal development. So if we look at numbers, she needs to work next. Thalia will correctly round and after that she'll work on rounding to the nearest tens, hundreds, and thousands. Within place value, she's working on thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions and then after that she'll be working on decimal place value. This green highlight tells us where she's at. Her current present level is at 3.9, but she's working on a grade level 4.9, which is end of fourth grade skill. And then after that, she'll be working on decimal place value, which is fifth grade. These skills here, these three with the green arrows, she's mastered. So she's mastered comparing and ordering, addition of whole numbers, subtraction of whole numbers. Within fractions, we see she needs a little bit more work. She's operating at a fourth grade level but she needs to work on calculating the least common multiple and then adding fractions with like denominators and so on and so forth. And all of these skills are below her grade level, so it's in red, meaning she needs to work on this in order to get up to grade level. Um, but this report goes on and on and on. There's lots of information, very, very specific. Students can understand it, parents can understand it, teachers can understand it. Also, we have a version of this for uh, special education where uh, a special educator can use this to mine the data, to find present levels, to set goals. So it's pretty amazing. So coming back to our main page, we see that teachers have a wealth of information at their fingertips. They could organize students in a small group on a daily basis. They can print reports out, um, whether it's with meeting with a teacher, another teacher, a specialist, or a parent, or even a student. We can also look at individual students' progress. So let's look at Thalia over time. How has she done? I can go ahead and graph some different assessments from different years. And then I'll hit display graph. And now we see this is her progress over time. The last thing I want to point out is all of this granular data is what drives our LGL MathEdge, which is our data-driven personalized learning course for each student. 
Well, that's it. That's Adam in a nutshell. Thank you very much.